We were so excited to see eternal rivals Brazil and Argentina lock horns in their World Cup qualification game. I'm sure you must have expected a treat between two of the most successful nations in football. Sadly though, four Argentine players were detained by the representatives of Brazil's Ministry of Health. This will be the main agenda for today's video, but we need to discuss a few other important stories as well, such as Jesse Lingard's imitation of Cristiano Ronaldo's celebration during England's World Cup qualification cakewalk against Andorra. Chelsea's women's football team manager Emma Hayes has asked the league to introduce VAR and goal line technology into the Women's Super League. Romelu Lukaku, meanwhile, doesn't like it when people start comparing him to Cristiano Ronaldo, and the Belgian giant has made a very good point. Alright everyone, let's get right to it, and before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel and follow us on our Instagram page. And that brings us to the sponsor of this video. Unless you want to miss out on your favourite team's games, you're going to need a VPN that can get you past all those annoying streaming geo restrictions. Can't access your favourite league? A VPN will allow you to stream content like football games or even Netflix shows that are not available in your country. Our favourite VPN provider is Private Internet Access. It changes your IP address and reroutes your internet traffic through an encrypted tunnel hiding your online activity from your internet service provider and government sensors. It's our favorite tool to stream football matches for free. It works with all major streaming services, so you have unrestricted access to all your favorite content anywhere in the world and is available for all operating systems. Signing up is risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Sign up right now to get 83% off, plus two free extra months. Go to www.privateinternetaccess.com forward slash goalside to get it now, or simply press the link in the description. In recent weeks, FIFA president Gianni Infantino has suggested that he would like to see the World Cup happen every two years. His sentiments are echoed by ex-Arsenal manager Arsene Wenger, who's currently FIFA's chief of global football development. I think that Goalside and Sergio Busquets are on the same wavelength. The Barcelona star says that forcing the players to participate in so many competitions will cause them to explode. While speaking to the media, the World Cup winner said that organizing bodies are so eager to create new competitions that they have stopped giving a rat's derriere about the well-being of players. They want more Euros, more World Cups, more Club World Cups, more League games, more games for every competition. There will be a moment when the players will explode because the games are becoming more and more demanding and we have less time to rest. So it is difficult to handle as we have seen recently with this pandemic, where some different competitions have clashed. All of this will bring some consequences, so it would be necessary to have a meeting and listen to all the parties. Now I don't know what you lot think. But if FIFA decides to host a biennial World Cup, it would be a boneheaded decision and something that would also make the European Super League plans look like a very innocent attempt to make extra cash. Hopefully sense will prevail and there'll be some influential person saying, if it ain't broken, why fix it? Belgian international Romelu Lukaku is a simple man. He takes the field, scores goals and then celebrates a win with his teammates. The 28-year-old has no time for useless, or let's say, idiotic comparisons. So, when a reporter hinted at a comparison between him and Cristiano Ronaldo, the former Manchester United man politely asked everyone in the room to never compare him with the Portugal great. Lukaku, who has 66 goals for the national side, says that the new United man is among the top three best players in the game's history, and that he was lucky to have played against him during his time in Italy. Don't ever compare me to Cristiano Ronaldo, never, Lukaku said at a press conference ahead of Belgium's World Cup qualifier against the Czech Republic on Sunday, a game in which he's set to earn his 100th cap. Cristiano Ronaldo is, for me, in the top three best players in the history of football, he continued. I'm not going to rank him from first to third, but he's in there. What he has achieved in football today for players of my generation is something exceptional. I was lucky enough to play against him in Italy, and now that he's back in the Premier League, it's all good for English football. As for the rest, comparing statistics and all that, it's useless. At Goalside, we don't pretend to be an all-knowing football platform, but don't you think that comparing Lukaku and Ronaldo is something that only a new football fan would do? Chelsea women's manager Emma Hayes has asked for the Women's Super League to introduce VAR and goal line technology following their team's 3-2 defeat at the hands of Arsenal. 
Hayes says that as long as technology is not introduced in the league, players will remain second-class citizens. The game between Chelsea and Arsenal went fine until the final goal of the game, which appeared to have happened from an offside position. Speaking to reporters after the final whistle, the Blues boss said that it's reasonable to ask why the league hasn't introduced VAR or goal line tech so far. It was two yards offside. The positive is there have been goals for the fans and it's been a brilliant weekend for women's football, Hayes told reporters after the final whistle. There have been good attendances. The negative is that by putting our product in such a brilliant place is that everyone is asking the questions of why we don't have goal line technology or why we don't have VAR. This isn't the first time lack of technology has impacted the outcome of a game. Recently, Manchester United won 2-0 against Reading, but a Reading goal was disallowed even though the ball had clearly crossed the line. Women's football is slowly getting there, however, unwillingness to introduce critical systems is not going to help speed things up. Hopefully, the WSL turns a page this time around. England cruised to a 4-0 win over Andorra in their Qatar 2022 World Cup qualification game. The game was supposed to be a breeze anyway, and Gareth Southgate decided to start with Jesse Lingard, who's yet to play for Man United this season. The talented midfielder opened the scoring before adding another. His overall performance was quite good, but the most eye-catching moment was when he performed Ronaldo's trademark celebration with his own J-Ling's hand signals. This would be the first time that Lingard will be sharing the dressing room with Ronaldo. He idolised Ronaldo while representing United's youth teams and is clearly eager to meet up with him as soon as he reports back to training. The veteran forward, meanwhile, is already in self-isolation and is in line to make his debut in United's upcoming league game against Newcastle United. The World Cup qualification game between Brazil and Argentina was thrown into utter chaos on Sunday when Brazil's health authorities attempted to detain several members of the Argentine side for alleged falsification of travel information upon entry to Brazil. The four players, including Emiliano Martinez, Cristian Romero and Giovanni Lo Celso, were cleared to play in the game against the Celestal, despite not going through the mandatory quarantine regulations. Emiliano Buendia was also part of the chaos, but unlike Martinez, Romero and Lo Celso, who were advised by the Brazilian government to be deported, the Aston Villa man was only going to be detained monetarily. Within five minutes of the game, scores of officers were seen storming onto the pitch, much to the surprise of everyone watching and playing the game. Plainclothes police and health officials started entering the field of play to apprehend Buendia, Lo Celso, Martinez and Romero, while former Manchester City man Nicolas Otamendi was seen coming to the defence of his teammates and was also seen being pushed by a government official. It was necessary to keep our sanitary protocol, said Antonio Barra Torres, the head of the Brazilian Health Regulatory Agency, via Rede Globo. We called the federal police that went to the hotel and we found out that they had already left for the stadium. The rest is what you're watching live. However, all four men were protected by their national teammates and in the end, Lionel Messi led his side back down the tunnel. As it stands, Commabol has decided to suspend the game, but a final decision on the result will be made by FIFA after an investigation. The World Cup qualifiers is a FIFA competition, wrote the South American football governing body in a statement. All decisions concerning its organization and development are the exclusive power of that institution. The four players came from the United Kingdom, which is one of the many countries in Brazil's red list. Under national law, foreign travellers coming from a red list country are supposed to complete a 14-day quarantine period once they land. Apparently, the Argentine contingent that plays its club football in the Premier League declared that they had visited Caracas before coming to Rio de Janeiro while choosing not to reveal to the local authorities that they had been in the UK. Martinez, Romero, Buendia and Lo Celso were allowed by their clubs to leave England even though other Commebol nations were not that lucky. Brazil was unable to call upon nine of their players for this game after the league refused to release players to red list countries. Regardless, we can't pin the blame on anyone at this point. Right now, the world is a messy place, for sure, due to this pandemic that refuses to go away. However, let's hope that everything settles down and we see the two giants of the game face off at a later date.